Hi everybody, I hope that you are doing well, that you're staying healthy and um, that you're staying elevated in the this time that we're in right now. Uh, the nothing is like it used to be. Um, so fast forward from March to now, um, most of everybody are either working on fitness, working on um, second job, working on renovating, uh, or just staying sane uh, during this time. So um, welcome to the first episode of the Alpha Female Chronicles. For today's first episode, I will be your host. My name is Dini Desire. I am a blogger, a banker, poet, um, maybe you want to be a writer at some point in this lifetime, but today I will be your moderator. So this podcast is uh, originating from a book. No, actually, this podcast originates from a blog that a very good friend of mine started to put out all of her um, mental musings and, and things that were going on through her head. She wanted to put them somewhere for, um, for out there for anybody who wanted to read them. And from then on, it snowballed into what we have now and then probably will continue to roll on into other amazing uh, projects. So it is my greatest pleasure to introduce to you Lindsay August, that is the amazing uh, friend that I have, writer of the Alpha Female Chronicles book, blog, and this podcast. So welcome, Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you for this great introduction. And uh, if I can add something to your description, you forgot to add amazing mom. <laughs> that's, that's true. Something <laughs> that is worth noting. Um, thank, you. thank you for being the moderator. Um, I say that I think that you're the best moderator that I could have for the first episode. And uh, yeah, I, I look forward to uh, any questions? <laughs> good, good. Well, we can just go right ahead and jump into, um, into let's jump into it, actually. So That's let's good. not make things complicated. So to first off, um, for everybody that, you know, don't know you, can you situate our listeners as to figuring out who is Lindsay? Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a big question that um, requires a complex answer, but I'll try to try to make it as simple as possible. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I'm a writer. I'm a content creator. I work in marketing, but my ultimate goal is to be an author. Um, I've been writing for quite some time. Um, I am also a child of God. My faith um, plays an important role in my life in how I interact with others, how I work. Um, it has shaped me and um, it shows up a lot in my writing. Uh, what else can I say? Um, I I can be stubborn. I <laughs> I am determined. Sometimes, not sometimes. Most of the time, I see what I mean, and it could come out a little harsh. But yeah. I, I I always try to be as real as I can be, and that's something that I also want to show in my writing. And I, what else can I say? Um, I love movies. I love fashion. Um, I'm a bit of a shopaholic. Um, I love, <laughs> aren't we all? Aren't, aren't we all? Especially aren't in the quarantine, like Amazon, yeah. take my money. 
So yeah. Let's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> take the whole paycheck. Um, I do. <laughs> and I love films. I love classic films. Um, I love watching TCM to just to watch old movies. I love, I love watching TV. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm really a couch potato at heart. Like I can spend hours watching TV. Um, and yes, I have most of my brain cells still intact, but, um, <laughs> I'm, I, I love pop culture. Um, I'm not immersed in pop culture as much as I used to, but, um, I still love it. And, um, music uh, anything inspires me anything and everything inspires me the the most the silliest things can inspire me in my writing and the most like deep and controversial things can also inspire me in my writing so i think that's basically who i am yeah and i love football <laughs> yes yes for those who do not know um lindsay is a uh, hardcore Patriots fan. Yeah. Um, I think she, yeah, she really goes hard for Tom Brady and the team. <laughs> um, you will, true. you will be on social media. You will see Lindsay will have at least a post a month minimum about her team, the Patriots. I, I love my <laughs> team, and this this quarantine has been really difficult because, unfortunately. Tom, Tom Brady left the Patriots, but he's still my quarterback. And I still a Pats fan. As you can see in the background, my teddy bear, who I call Teddy Bear Brewski, is rocking a little um, Pats sweater. So that's <laughs> Patriots have a place in my heart. So that's it. That's it. That's who I am. That's who I am. Exactly. That's who you are. That's it. <laughs> definitely an amazing person and um your list the listeners will get to see how amazing in a few short moments so here we are um starting off and i want to maybe take a moment to talk about your blog because it's it's it was like the beginning for you um you i'm pretty sure you used to write you're in there i think all of us writers and, and bloggers um people that like poetry will write pieces here and there but like to get to a point where you find that you need to focus it into one place it takes it takes an incredible amount of courage especially to put it online so tell us what um inspired you to actually start the blog and put everything out there well, um, I would say maybe around like 2006, 2007, I was thinking about starting a blog because I started following a few blogs and I really enjoy them. And I love the fact that um, each author could engage with their audience through life experiences or through um, events that happen in like um, around the world or whatever locally. And I thought it was so interesting and I thought it was really fun. And I was trying to work up the courage and I was like, no, I can't. Although I've always wanted to be like a published author, I was kind of scared to put my writing out there. But in a way, I knew that it could be really liberating um, just to share with everyone else, like my point of view. But I was still really scared, so I wasn't really thinking about it. And then... In the summer of 2007, I went through a really, really bad breakup. And that was the catalyst for many, many things in my life. Um, the year prior to that, um, I had a big shift in my life where I was overcoming surgery, the lupus, and that changed my life as well. It changed my whole perspective and I, it gave me a new lease on life. Like I, I became more motivated and I was really encouraged to just step out of my comfort zone and try things I've never done before. Um, around that time, I, I gave my life to Christ. I started going back to church. Um, I started working out. So a year after that, I was still like on the same path that I was to explore my horizons and step out of my comfort zone. and 
having a broken heart, it kind of, I kind of didn't have a choice but to get those emotions out. Not just about the breakup, but about everything else that had been going on in my life. So, I mean, the good thing about blogs is that you don't have a boss. You don't have an editor to kind of push you back or to tell you that your writing sucks or, you know, <laughs> to try to prevent you from, like, being your best self or being yourself. So that was something that's, that was the most motivating for me. So um, I created my blog. I don't remember exactly what my first post was, but I think I released it in the summer of 2007 or maybe early fall. I would have to go back and look at it. But it was basically, I think my first post was just saying, hey, here I am, and I'm trying something new. This is me. <laughs> and this is me, okay? And, you know, um, I didn't know that that blog would take me on a journey. And it was, for me, the best thing that could come out of a difficult situation. And it was this blog that helped me... Um, navigate through all kinds of emotions throughout all kinds of events in my life um being in school being in university um dealing with the like lupus and all that it entails like taking care of your health taking care of taking care of your mental health juggling that with like working hard in school and um trying to stay motivated trying to stay positive um and in my blog I always made sure to to have to 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 have humor in it because that's the kind of person I am. Like I love I love to make jokes. I, I'm I'm very I'm a very sarcastic person, so humor is integrated in everything I say and everything I do. So I knew that I wanted to add that element as well. So to me my blog really gave me an opportunity to express myself in ways that I had never done. And to also see the feedback that I would get from my posts, it was really encouraging to see that I was able to connect with people and not necessarily people who know me, people who were just like visiting my blog and were like, oh, like I really like your article or I really like that point of view. And even having readers challenge me a bit sometimes, you know, um, that was also interesting. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, so I know that uh, your blog, your posts were very, very liberal in the way that they were put together. Um, however, I know that you also have a love for poetry and you kind of fashioned a lot of, uh, a lot of your writings in, in that sense. Um, um, also, uh, so Given that writing for you was an outlet um, through for everything that went through um, that went on in your life, can you tell us if there like are there any topics that you like never really felt comfortable putting on paper, like without getting into it, like just letting know, like oh, talking about this always felt kind of wrong or uh, things like that. Um, I mean, there there may be a few, um, but. I would say that th those topics that I wouldn't talk about um, openly, I would hint at them in my writing, in my poetry. Like without dedicating a poem to um, a situation or a person in particular, I would integrate elements of like how I felt about someone in a poem that talks about the general situation. Like per Example, um, I have one of the poems that is featured in my book and that was featured in my blog is 70 times seven. That is taken from a passage in the Bible where um, it's written that um, someone is asking Jesus, how many times do I have to forgive someone? Like how many times is it 70 times like seven, like or something like that. And just to show you how many times you're asked to forgive someone. And in that poem, I refer to several people in that poem, several people that have made it hard for me to forgive. So there's always a way for me to, 
to talk about maybe certain things that I wouldn't necessarily talk about directly. Like I can use that in, in the poetry. But I would say that most of the things in my life I talk about in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so that, put it out there. <laughs> I put it out there. Nothing is off limits, like really. And I'm even surprised how deep I got in some of the poems, especially in the love section. When I read it now, I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I went in. <laughs> and I'm like, it's, it's good for me to see that. And it was good for me to read it. And I, I can't wait to see how people like react. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm going to get some negative feedback. <laughs> I am very well. I, listen. <laughs> if some people read the poems and they're like she's talking about me I'm like you know what it is what it is I didn't maybe <laughs> <laughs> your name is not in there but maybe <laughs> hey, hey, hey. we don't know <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for that um, so I know you're, you're, you're currently working on your book um, we, we, we had spoken about like the different stages that you have to go through, like editing, uh, reviewing mock-ups, all that stuff. I know that it's taking, um, it's, it's taking shape, right. And, um, slowly becoming an actual project. We're almost uh, there. We're almost there. We're almost there. Exactly. Yeah, we're almost there. <laughs> It's a question of a few minor adjustments, but we'll yeah. be there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I know that your your book is separated in, in different chapters. So we cover you cover love, you cover faith, uh, your true self. Um, you cover also um, grinding. So the being on the hustling mode, whether it's in school or at work and stuff like that. Um, but I wanted to go back to. Um, to the crust. Um, I actually, um, I was watching um, Soundtrack, the Netflix series that came out um, late last year. And the first episode, you have one of the, one of the characters telling us that every song that you hear has a common denominator, which is love. Whether the song is, it's, it's, uh, raging against somebody or raging against against politics religion or stuff like that it comes on the basis of um of the love for something in particular and and how you relate to it uh so i know that throughout all of your chapters love is is not necessarily portrayed but it's it's there right? Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to focus specifically on the love chapter of your book. I know that it's filled with up and downs. When you read it, you can feel it. You go through kind of like the, the experience, the emotion. Um, so I wanted you to tell us, you know, how did it feel for you to write them down initially? And, and like, how did you, how did you know that you, you weren't going back on that roller coaster? Like you had done it once and that was it. Um, each of these poems were written, um, right after I experienced something. So, um, I would say one of the poems, um, A Guy Like You, um, that I wrote that at, like at the moment where I was in this situation where, um, that was this individual who was interested in me. He had manifested an interest. <laughs> and he he checked all the boxes, but sometimes checking all the boxes is not enough. Yeah. You no, know? and there's just there was not the chemistry factor going on, and at the same time, I was interested in someone else who checked boxes and had a little bit that oomph. A right. bit more, yeah. Exactly. So I was in that situation when I wrote that poem, you know? So just just to be clear, I did not cheat on anyone. I was not dating them. <laughs> I did not cheat. Listen, dating involves um, mingling. Mingling. So, 
mingling. You're allowed to mingle with more than one individual. And then when there's an agreement between the both of you that you guys are being exclusive, then this is another title altogether. Exactly. That's another episode. I got another episode <laughs> coming up just for that. Yeah. Just to wait. So, yeah, for that poem, I was, I was knee deep in that um, situation as I wrote it. And that's um, pretty much how most of the poems came to be. Um, every poem is really like cathartic for me. Like, I need to process these emotions when we put them on paper. So I think that's what makes my writing as strong as it is because I kind of write on the spot, like after something happens or while something is happening, you know? Um, but like I mentioned earlier, now that I'm rereading the poems of the love section, I'm like... <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot of emotions. That's that's a lot to go through. It's not that my like I kind of blocked experiencing these things from my memory or whatever, but just rereading it and kind of reliving all the ups and downs and disappointments and all of that. I'm like that's that's a lot to take in, and um, also it. It, it takes a toll on someone to live those emotions and to relive them. But you relive them with more wisdom, you know? And, you know, high, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? So you have to better understand the whole situation that you were in. And you're able to be kinder to yourself because I was really hard on myself. Um, during that time, like we're talking about like 2008, like that's a long time ago. Some of these poems in the love section, they date back to 2008, 2010. So I was really hard on myself, like telling myself, you know, you should be strong, you should be tough. So like, you know, you got this, you know, grow it up, you know? <laughs> and now I'm, I think in some ways, like I've become kinder to myself and I understand things like differently. And I'm like, I should have just given myself a break. Yeah. You no, know, like everyone goes through like heartbreak or disappointments in relationships or whatever. But I think at the time I expected myself to be like wiser and stronger. I, I was expecting myself to be in the state that I am today, which is a bit more like wiser. I wasn't there yet, but it's okay that I wasn't there yet because there was a whole bunch of stuff I lived through yet to be able to get that wisdom. So reading these poems now, it really allowed me to just be like, hey, you know what? I went through this. I grew from that. And you came on the other side. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, actually, I actually know um, know how it feels to, um, to like put something on paper. Like for me, for me I, am, I have a tendency of I don't share emotions. I just talk about stuff. I like I'll I'll cry in the privacy of my room. If I'm frustrated, I'll just take a breath, walk away. That's the that's the type of person I am, right? So yes. writing for me was always a way to put that that maelstrom of emotions out of myself, so that I could like kind of like regenerate and and renew, kind of like um, how does it lower the level basically. Mm -hmm. um, so once I put it on paper, I would forget about it completely. Like that, that was, that was therapy for me. It's taking that emotion, putting it into words. Sometimes it was words that I, I wished I had said, mm -hmm. um, you know, like you, when you, when you are in a situation and then when you think about it afterwards, like you always have like the perfect responses, yeah. the perfect reactions, I'm always ready, yeah. but like <laughs> on the spot, you're like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Um, so, so yeah, so I understand the way that, you know, when you, you put something on paper, you put it away because that's, that's a bit how it is, you know, it's your outlet. And then taking that sheet of paper, like months or years later and reading through it and it's, it's, it can get overwhelming. So I totally understand. I've lived through that as well. So it's, it's, 
it's a process, but it's it's a good process. However, it is, it is. It's and I I actually recommend that all our listeners go through that process. Sometimes it's just. You know, you don't have necessarily have to write poetry. You don't have to write short stories, but like keeping a diary, you know, will give allow you to like express things that you probably would never say to anybody. You know. Yeah. Um. So your book is um titled your your blog actually is titled um the same as your book and the same as your podcast, mm-hmm. uh, which is um, Alpha Female Chronicles. So tell us, you know, how do you emulate being an alpha female? Like what, what goes into that construct that, that you're, you're putting out? Um, I think for some people, the term alpha can have like a negative connotation. Like when you think about like an alpha male, you think about like top dog, like, yeah, it's always like macho. Oh, macho. He always has to be like in charge. He's barking yeah. always, whatever. For for women, like now for female, like the way I saw it, um, was a woman who takes charge, who's who's a, a leader who exudes um the characteristics characteristics of a leader. Um, someone who is not afraid of working hard, of making the necessary sacrifices to get things done um someone who's natural i would say naturally inclined to take charge but that doesn't mean that you have to be born an alpha female you can become an alpha female it's not something whether you got it or you don't i think what stands out the most in being an alpha female is just to take the lead um having goals and working towards them and yeah not being afraid to to grind, to make sacrifices to help you go forward. And I think one aspect that um, that's really important to me as an alpha female is just to set myself on the path that God had created for me to take on, to get to where he wants me to be and to become that person he wants me to be. Because being an alpha female is not like one, like, it's not like okay, that's it. You're not a female, you know. You, <laughs> you did it. No, it's like yeah, it's not a one track, uh, exactly. one track parkour. It's just an ever evolving process, you know. It's it's this journey that you accepted to take to take on, and you just go wherever life takes you, and you're yeah, you have ultimate goals that you want to um to achieve, but this life is going to take you on a journey to get you there. That's going to transform you. And you're willing to get on that course, you know? So I think that's what being an alpha female is about. The reason why I named it alpha female is that, um, when I created that blog, I realized that I, I did, um, emulate those characteristics. And I felt that being the kind of woman that I, I am, it also became a threat and a sort of roadblock in some of my relationships. And it, it was actually a point of contention, like in a lot of the relationships and friendships that I've had, um, I kind of touch on that in the true self section where being someone who's driven who's successful, who works hard, and who has high standards in all kinds of aspects of their life, whether it's um, love, uh, career, personal growth. Um, In certain environments, in certain relationships and friendships, that can be perceived as as a threat or as a roadblock in a relationship. And I always thought that was was weird. Like, I'm like, how, how is, like my ambition like a threat to yours my life <laughs> how is my life how is my being yeah. uh, to, to you like because i'm driven because i'm a go-getter um because i'm um not an overachiever but i work hard like i'm a workaholic and i'm making you feel bad because 
you're a bit of a slacker. I never called you a slacker, but you know, <laughs> you know you're a slacker. And you see my success, and I, I share my success with you because you're my friend or you're someone that I'm in a relationship with. And I'm sharing this with you because I'm happy and I want you to be happy for me. And you're kind of like, you know, it's, it's yeah. unfortunate, but I've had that situation happen to me so many times where it came to a point where I decided to kind of undermine my success or kind of tone down my ambition or just yeah. talk about it because I'm like, I don't want this to cause an argument or to feel um, your resentment or something like that. So when I created that blog, I was like, okay. Originally, the name of the blog was Random Thoughts of an Alpha Female. And then I changed it a few years ago to make it shorter. But it was basically that, the random thoughts of an alpha female. And I was like, I am an alpha female. I am. I am that go-getter. And I'll, I'll be unapologetic about it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to feel bad about it anymore. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's so sad that sometimes as women, we feel bad about being ambitious, about being a go-getter, about grinding about like hustling and all of that just to, to to achieve our goals and to be the best versions of ourselves and i was like no this this is gonna stop it's not it's not something that i was able to stop like like in one shot it's <laughs> something that to this day i still have to encourage myself to just allow myself to just to evolve keep trying keep, keep, keep I'm yeah. um, trying hard and attaining my goals, and it's something that stop making excuses. Like you're a go getter. That's 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 who you are, and that's okay, you know. And if you're around people who are not don't appreciate that, who don't appreciate that, or haven't tapped into that yet, it, it's I don't have to feel bad. I shouldn't have to feel bad. Uh -huh.